In this demonstration, we'll be taking a look at Yara Ready for This, which is in round two for individuals in track A. And so for a little bit of background, usually analysts will discover an infected system on a network and they quickly have to write custom Yara roles in order to identify other systems that have been infected by the same malicious executable. As an example, Yara rules are what was used to detect Petya, which infected over 80 companies and caused $10 billion in damage. This challenge helps with identifying indicators of compromise necessary to develop those rules. And so with this challenge, you're provided with a Windows 10 virtual machine, which is a sandbox for executing the malware. You're provided with a CD-ROM containing the malware, sys internal suite, and also a Yara application. And we've already followed the directions and extracted these two folders here on the desktop. You want to start by baselining the system. And so we will open up Process Explorer 64 and we will also open up Wireshark. We wanna look at our ethernet interface. And for the first part of the challenge, we're asked to identify a DLL. So it's a good idea to open up the view DLLs window within Process Explorer. Now we can go ahead and execute that malware. So if we go back to the desktop and open the folder and run this, when we look at our applications, you'll see that it is in fact running here. When we look at Wireshark, you'll see that there's some HTTP traffic and so that looks suspicious. If we filter on HTTP, it looks like some DLLs are being pulled down. And since this is in a sandbox environment, we can go ahead and allow access so that we can study this malware. And let's go take a look at some more packet captures. And the first challenge question asked us which of these was downloaded but is not running. So if we go and look in Process Explorer and we can sort by path. What we'll find is here is the list of ones that are running. And if we look at the path here, these are under where we had executed it, a folder called modules. If we open that and compare, we have this RST NOP that was downloaded, but not running here. So if we go back to our challenge questions, we will want to enter RST NOP dot DLL as our answer to the first question. Next, we want to find the 16 character token value of the decryption key. And if we go back to our system here, the easiest way to do that is with procmon64. And we can open that and we'll click the filter. And we'll change the default here to contains and type in a D S V C E X E Z and click add. And we'll change the event class back to is and type in registry and click add. And we will also add a operation and have that as reg set value and click add. And now what we see is our malicious file setting some registry keys. And if we go and look at registry editor and follow the path here, So H key, current user, software, Microsoft, fax, user info, and run count. And this is a little bit tricky, but you have to run this 
malware multiple times and you'll see it's been run twice and now if we go and refresh it's been run a third time and if we go back to process monitor what we'll see is a decryption key was written to Microsoft setup AD service exec and you can also jump to that value in the registry and open it and then copy this and pull it out of the virtual machine and paste it into challenge question number two. And so for the third question of this challenge, you're told that there are encrypted files that were downloaded at runtime. You're going to need to be able to find the encrypted files, find the app that was used to encrypt and decrypt the files, and then use the decryption key found in the second question in order to decrypt the files and find the token. So since we're told that these were downloaded, we'll go ahead and take a look at Wireshark. And scrolling through the list here, we start to find some text files and we also find some csv.encrypted files. If we use File Explorer, we can actually search for these. And they are all located at Program Data Windows 10 Storage Data Temp. If we do a open file location, we'll see all the files. And taking a look back at Wireshark, you'll notice that these were pulled down from 10.5.5.173 and this specific folder. So if we go and open a web browser and navigate to 10.5.5.173 slash xkbr34mno. The one file that we didn't pull down was encrypt file contents.zip. And we can download that and open the file and extract this. And then we'll run the executable. And when we run the executable, it actually tells us how to go about decrypting these files. So if we open the command prompt and pull the executable into the command prompt, then add a space dash D for decrypt, and then go ahead and type in the path and paste that and make sure the syntax is proper. Now when we go back to program data and Windows 10 and storage data temp, the chemical elements.txt is no longer encrypted. And so if we continue through all these files, once we get to the personal.txt, it will actually have the token. And we can take a look at that by replacing chemical elements.txt with personal.txt. And going back to temp folder and seeing the token. And while there are four more questions that make up this challenge, this demonstration has provided you with a glimpse of some of what it takes to solve this challenge.